Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mads. I like to do creative projects. Back in December of 2020, I started doing some stick and poke tattoos, and I have been vlogging the process. This is the second in this series. We're putting a death positivity skeleton and tombstone on my leg. And if it's your first time watching one of my videos, that little fuzzball is called Mooney. I am her human. She's a good cat. She just talks a lot, so we get along. You'll see her uh, hopping up all the time in these videos, because anytime I am talking to myself, she has to come in and figure out what the heck is wrong with me. So she is a good lady. What we're doing right now is doing some research on the anat- well, other than petting the cat. We're also doing some research on anatomy to make sure my skeleton is as accurate as possible. Previous to this, I think I used to always draw rib cages with only eight ribs. Turns out there's more like 12 on most humans. Not all humans, but most. I want, here's the new tattoo in here. I wanted the skeleton here and its arms were gonna be reaching around my calf and the tombstone was gonna be here. The problem is, is I also want a mermaid pinup up here and it would be redundant to have a skeleton and then a mermaid. And so now I'm going to change the entire skeleton so the whole thing's on this side. Exhausting. So originally, this was the scale of my skeleton. He was going to be like 15 inches tall. Um, and that's why this part was going to go on my inner leg and he was going to go on my outer leg. But now I'm overthinking everything and realizing I'm making this very complicated. And now we're resketching to a 12 inch tall, so it's 15 inches all together, and it's all on my inner leg instead of trying to overlap. Okay, if I try to do some like statuesque pose where the feet are kind of over here, we can fit some feet. About how long do we go? We got knees about here, knees on my ankle. Why not? A skull about here. My pen, my brand new pen is already giving up the ghost. Thank you, brand new pen. Glad I went out of my way. Get this medical pen. And that means this tombstone go right up here. This tombstone, by the way, is um what I want done with my earthly remains when I die. It's not actually gonna say my name, it's gonna say Tempest Fujit or Time Flies and then have a little uh, like natural burial casket, a little aqua aquamation circle, and a little cremation square, and just little symbols uh, indicating what I want done with my body when I'm dead. When I'm not using my body no more. Um, a little hourglass, so that's much so you can't see shit with my fuzzy ass legs. Holy fucking mother of God. So instead of a giant ass skeleton, we'll have a medium ass skeleton. Brr. Watch me draw upside down. This is gonna be freaking hilarious. I also want the pose to be more expressive. The other one is just kind of someone standing there. This is using myself as a reference for the body because otherwise it's very stagnant, like most of my figure drawings. Very, very stagnant. Let's please. All right. I don't even know how much time I put into the design of this, but I have to be honest with you, I think I redrew the skeleton at least 10 times. I have a lot of my friends who are trying to be supportive and they're like, oh, are you going to do tattoos professionally? It's like, wow, that'd be amazing. But I take so much time in the design process. Um, at this point, I'm redrawing the entire skeleton. I had to scoot his skull up a little bit because it looked like he didn't have a neck. Actually, the skull is twice as big as it should be on a skeleton, but it looks cool, so I don't really care. Um, but yeah, it would be... Amazing to start tattooing other people, but I am not in any rush to do that. In the future, I would like to 
design some small flashes that would be available to my friends. But again, um, I am so nitpicky about designs and spending hours and hours and hours just in the research process and the sketching process and being paranoid that I'm putting, you know, words on me that mean something that I don't know what they mean. You know, maybe a, a, I accidentally put a symbol for something else on me. It's very easy to overthink. So a lot of this whole stick and poke experience that I'm going through is less about learning how to tattoo and more learning how to stop thinking so much and to just do the thing. Because I want a legged sleeve so bad. And so that's what we're doing. We're making this happen. Even if it's not perfect, I am going to have a leg sleeve by the end of 2021. That is my goal. And now we will begin the setup process to start poking. Oh, my knees popped. Now you get to watch me um, set up a, a beanbag chair because I'm 31 and I still own a beanbag chair. Who cares? Let me show you. I'll be right back. Time lapse time. Cue Benny Hill music. terrible patch that I had to shave into my leg. I, I have become very accustomed to having furry legs. <sighs> Making sure like the placement is kind of leaning back a little bit, but that's okay. And that'll bring the tombstone all the way up to like top of sock line. Look at all these bug bite scars. My God, they never go away. The feet are gonna be right on the, that's gonna hurt to do. That's a decision. I'm gonna scoot it up just a little bit. I don't, I don't know what's up with this fluffy one. Can you tell me? Come here. Come here. Come say hi. You gotta be in every video. Come here. Don't pick me up. She hates being picked up. She hates it. Say hello. Say hello. She says goodbye. She really says goodbye. She says, are you gonna pet me or not? Are you just teasing me? Are you just talking to yourself? The answer is yes. I don't know what she wants from me, but I'm gonna, okay, finish coffee. Get clean, poke leg. Later. There aren't enough lights on again, but I don't really care. Oh, the cat hath scratched me. I'm so pale, I don't know if you'll see him, but when when I picked her up earlier and she tried to go over my shoulder. <laughs> okay, um... My music's playing in the other room and it's too much effort for me to go turn it off. Let's make some decisions real quick. Make some irreparable... You know what's funny? I'm less nervous about the lines, but I am nervous to practice white. Because once white goes down, like, that's going to be impossible to cover up. It's just film skip, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's... Look at this guy. Alright, buddy. Did I shave enough? I might have not shaved out quite far enough for the arms. That would be funny. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm out of the frame. I don't care. I have made a couple of marks with my stencil so that I know approximately where I want to put them. I'm just gonna look at it though. Oh, this other leg did not go down. 
when that's gonna bleed now. Learning. Oh, just a big learning process. Oh God. Okay. Well, here's my first application of my biggest stencil ever. I don't know. I'm gonna let that air dry and I'm gonna go look at it in the mirror and decide what I think. I don't know if I'm just being nitpicky, but, but boys and girls, I think I'm gonna redo the stencil because he's tilted back a little bit. Even if my leg's up straight, he looks like he's falling backwards. So I think the legs needed to come back and that'll make it a lot easier for me to put down because right now I'm having to straighten my whole leg and reach out over the whole thing to reach here. But if the feet are here, I can reach it okay. If there's anybody who's watching this vlog as um, a cautionary tale, working on this large of a scale for stick and poke was definitely biting off a little bit more than I could chew. Um, it is going to take about 20 hours to finish the outline of this tattoo total. I've put about a dozen hours into it so far and that's not including the drawings, that's not including making the stencils, that's just tattooing. So luckily, uh, I have all the time in the world right now, so who cares? I can take two months to finish one tattoo and that's fine. But just beware, this takes a lot of hours in poking. All right. That's good enough for me. And I think where the feet goes is more important than where anything else goes. Mooney, what are you doing? Oh, she's attacking the cable to this camera that I didn't realize is not plugged in at the moment. All right. If you can, learn from my mistakes. It helps a lot to lay down large stencils when you have a second person. And more than anything, I am sitting and leaning down and the entire stencil ends up getting kind of twisted because my leg is not straight at this time. So keep that in mind when putting on your own stencils. Okay. All right, well, that's far more legible. Jesus Christ. The arrangement I went with on this first sitting, trying to keep my leg elevated, was to save my neck and my back, but my hips started cramping up a little bit and I ended up not using this method the next time around, at least for my sitting arrangement. It's not very sanitary, as you know, to be sitting on a beanbag chair and pillows anyways. So it probably wasn't ideal in the first place, but that's something I've learned. You really have to consider the circulation of your leg because right now my knee and everything is like raised up above my hip and I do not have flexible hips. So this got pretty painful. The next time around, I just sat straight on the ground the other downside is this line that I'm putting down right now didn't take, uh, and the shins below it didn't take either. I think 
it was really difficult for me to see because it was so far out in front of where I was working from. And it's going to take a third pass to get this line and that far hip down. Now, if I wanted to overthink everything, I would freak out about future tattoos where I have no idea how I'm going to reach the outside of my leg. But that's not my problem right now. Right now, we're just worrying about my shin. So this actually, I really thought the bonier parts were going to hurt more. And I feel that the fleshier parts of my leg were the more painful, if, if any of it hurt. It was the fleshier bits. And that's because I wasn't holding the skin taut enough. One downside of practicing stick and poke on sheets of silicone is you don't need to stretch like you do with skin and you get out of the habit. I was so worried about smearing my stencil that I don't think I was holding this skin as taut as I should have. And as I was doing the legs and everything, I kept kind of feeling tired and worn out. But once I got to the ribs, I loved it. And it was very strange. It was like something clicked in my head. I didn't have to think or something. I just saw, you know, 24 lines right next to each other. And all I had to do is bam, 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 knock them out. And this part was super fun. And this makes me feel confident in the future that I'm going to want to continue poking. Because I really, really loved the monotonous little detail of this guy's rib cage. It was super fun to to poke. The long, long lines of the legs for some reason seemed intimidating and I was worried about them, but I loved the ribs. And in the long run, the ribs look great. And I think it's because I enjoyed them and I wasn't overthinking it that they turned out better than a lot of the rest of the ink. So just got to embrace the fun. Why didn't we get taught that in grade school, by the way? Like, do, do the things you enjoy because you'll be more productive and be less burned out that way. Shouldn't that, shouldn't that be something we all learn? Anyways, ooh, I sure hope you can't hear my stomach growling right now. That's a real professional, professional vlogger move, being starving. Look, look me in the eye when I speak to you. We are just over three hours in and I've done one pass. The nice part about one pass is it doesn't hurt at all. Like at all. It's like a two maximum. Every once in a while you're like, oh yeah, this is supposed to hurt. Downside about only getting one pass in on this sitting though is it is a little bit hard to read the stencil because you've just got spaced out pokes, but that's okay. I want to keep going, but I have things to do today for once. I feel like I should go get ready for the things I have to do. Ow! And I keep getting Charlie horses. That's my body saying it's time to stop. Because I am weak! I am weak! But... There we go. Day one of Mr. Skellington, I guess. I, I don't know. Man. Crazy. Can't believe I did that. See you later. I believe in my earlier vlog, you can see how I set up this little grip for my tattoo needles. It works just fine. And using a little kebab stick like I did and some flexi tape, uh, it, it totally gets the job done. But I also ended up investing in uh, a proper grip that I'll show you in a little bit that makes it a little bit easier. It's got a little bit more weight to the pencil, which is nice. So yeah, I don't know if I needed it, but look, Ma, I'm an adult and I got a sharps container. Are you proud of me? Look, danger. Now everyone will know that I might be a drug addict. I had a shower thought earlier, so riddle me this, fellow pokers. When you get your sheet, it has that, oh, I took it out on this one, but there's, there's like a protective thinner paper here, usually on the sheets. Do you put your stencil on this thick top sheet that's clean? Or do you put it on that thinner sheet that you can see through that I assumed was just for packaging purposes, like during transport, like it might rub. And so in order to have a perfect, like, which paper do you use? Cause I think I struggled putting down my stencil so much yesterday because this paper is thicker than the tissue paper that, yeah, this stuff is 
super thick. Thick. Maybe, maybe I'm doing it backwards. I don't know. Hmm. Then what? Oh, okay. Sing to me. Sing to me. Yes. Tell me all your problems. Now what? Now you're gonna get kisses. <gasps> That's what happens. You hop in my lap, you get kisses. I don't know what she was expecting. Round two. Goodbye. Anyway, leg. It's a leg. Look at my cute sock. So cute. Leg. Leg. Cat. Leg. Cat. Leg. My typical schedule for stick and poke is to give everything a week to heal before I do another pass. It's possible I should wait a little bit longer. I believe it's important to let the line heal before you go and fill anything in. But this is something I'm going to sort of experiment with in the future. By the way, I'm not wearing pants in this video. <laughs> Just hanging out in my boxers because I'm a child. Um, hope, hope no one minds. <laughs> Who cares? Um, but yeah, this was the second week. Just sat down and did another pass. Much easier to get into when you don't have to stress about getting your stencil down. By the way, I think I tried to put that stencil down three or four times. So it, it, I feel like learning how to stencil is its own art. Learning how to put down a stencil quickly and learning how to treat a stencil and not to blur your stencil as you're working with it. But this second week is so much nicer because you could just get into it and you could just start poking and kind of get into the flow of it without having to overthink and worry about things which is real good. Looks like my skeleton hands drifted apart a little bit. I'm gonna have to make this a little bit whiter. Yeah, I ended up fighting with the stencil quite a bit and I never even got footage of the final time I put the stencil down when I was happy with it. What I ended up doing was when my leg was completely sanitary and 100% dry is I taped the stencil to my leg where it was going to go so that I could fold it back up. The way I keep trying to lay this down is very difficult and I think that primarily has to do with the fact that as I stated earlier with my shower thought I am using the wrong piece of paper for my stencils. I'm using the thicker cleaner piece of paper that comes with the thermal paper. So that middle sheet that's thinner and you can see through a little bit better is definitely easier when you're trying to line something up like this. And now I will show you the neat little grip that I got off Etsy. These were nine or ten dollars. It's a little bit difficult to safely get the needle on and off unless I use different rubber bands, but because of the weight I think this was a little bit easier. Now something I noticed, wow, you can really see it right there. Um, I'm having a hard time getting the ink to run down the needle and that might be the angle at which I am tattooing. You really want 
as much saturation as you can handle while still being able to see where you can poke. Because thin inks or uh, uh, not as much ink really just isn't going to take. You need full saturation for the ink to pull down into your skin. Now speaking of ink, I have made a mistake. I switched brands of ink because I wanted to compare them. And there are two possible things that happened. Either my body does not like an ingredient in this ink, or I absentmindedly put some sunscreen over a semi-fresh tattoo. I did that on day four after I tattooed this. But as I will come on screen in a minute and explain, this is not going to get finished until March, which sucks. My goal was to have this skeleton colored in and the tombstone all shaded by the end of February. But, you know, it, it, life doesn't work out like that sometimes. So I have lear I learned a lot from this tattoo, way more than I learned from my first tattoo. And we'll definitely in the future make a very straightforward how to do a stick and poke tattoo. But you need to let me finish at least three more tattoos. And then I will tell you exactly how to do it right now. If you're watching this video, this is how to be a noob at stick and poke tattoo. Not how to do it properly, but how to do it cautiously. So, too long didn't read. Don't buy cheap ink off Amazon. Don't do that. Hello. Thank you for watching my video on my skeleton tattoo. It is week four, and I'm going to stop here. Not permanently, but for a month. Because what has happened is I did an experiment with the second half of my tattoo. The tombstone is in this brand of ink, and it is not healing. It is so itchy and so red and so inflamed a week later that I cannot poke it again, and it's not it, it's not like seepy. I'm not, I don't think it's infected. I think my body is trying to reject this ink and I don't know what it's gonna do. I, it's an experiment. So I really wanted to at least get white down and start shading the skeleton and get my tombstone all done. But yeah, for now, I'm gonna have to call it here on this uh, skeleton tattoo. And I might move on to my tattoo number three. I really wanted to finish a tattoo before I moved on to the next one. Um, but yeah, what sucks is I just bought a whole bunch of mom's brand. I bought a whole bunch of colors for a rainbow. And I don't know if it's just this black. I don't know. I tried to read the ingredients and it looks like it's written for robots. Someone tell me what this means. I mean, usually, usually, if something just has like coconut in it, then I'm like, oh, it was the coconut. So, that's interesting. I, I thought I was gonna experiment and see what the two different shades of black look like. They are two different shades of black, and I'm okay with that because it's a skeleton and his tombstone. Here, I'll let you look at it. Mooney, what do you think? Don't know how much of the redness is gonna pick up on the camera. But yeah, for a weekend, this really should have healed by now. I don't know if it's because I'm still going for walks. I don't know if it's gotten too much sun. Maybe it's just, you know, I got a sunburn over a scratch, but this is really raised and really angry and we're just gonna call it here. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please be safe when and if you try your own stick and pokes. And me and Mooney, We'll be back with a wizard soon. Bye. Please disinfect your environment. Please keep your hands clean. Please keep your skin clean. And just be very careful because this is itchy and sucky and you don't want this. Have a nice day.